Welcome to Meet the Artist, the show that features Michigan-made art by Michigan-made artists. I'm your host, Jessica Kira Moore, and on today's show, we'll introduce you to L. Renee, whose infectious vocal ability has captured the attention of fans worldwide. We'll also introduce you to Ralph Taylor, who designs and creates spectacular costumes that come to life when adorned by everyday people. It's all coming up next, where we let you meet the artist. If Usain Bolt represents Xfinity Internet, what happens when we double the speed on two of our most popular plans? Meet his twice as fast brother, Insane Bolt. Now stream movies and shows twice as fast. Xfinity, the fastest just got faster. Al Renee, singer, songwriter from Detroit, Michigan. She's also a background vocalist and duet partner for Motown recording artist Kim. She has a large following of dedicated fans who love how she expresses her thoughts and feelings through music. Although she is an artist at heart, you'll be surprised to find out that music was not her first career choice and how a teacher sparked her path to becoming a singer, songwriter, and performing artist. Yay. Yay. How you doing? I'm good. Okay, so tell me, who is El Renee and what defines you? I'm El Renee. I'm a singer and songwriter from Detroit, Michigan. I am born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. I live here and I tour as a background vocalist and duet partner for Universal Motown recording artist Kim. The L stands for Lori and Renee is my middle name. And L. Renee, that's where L. Renee comes from. Okay, so I've heard your voice. Of course, I know who you are. Um, for people who don't know, you know, tell us about your childhood. Where, where does the L. Renee story begin? I think the L. Renee story begins with um, listening to my father's um, band. He, he used to play saxophone and um, he would hold jam sessions in our basement. I would listen to anything from <laughs> funk to R&B and that's where I think that's where El Renee was born and when I say El Renee I mean the, the musically expressive part of myself. I mean, have you always wanted to pursue music? Or was it being in your your house in the basement, your father's jam sessions, did that do it or is it something? I mean, that's that's different than actually pursuing a career. You're, you're, you're right. And to answer that question, no. Um, originally, I wanted to become an architect. Okay. <laughs> I knew I wanted to do something art related, but I, I honestly, in my mind, I felt that, you know, it's a tough role, being an artist is hard, you don't make money, and I'm very ambitious. I know that if whatever I do in life, I want it to be financially lucrative. And I thought that being an artist was not gonna get me there. So I decided I wanted to be an architect. <laughs> and I, I pursued it for a little while, but then the passion for music inside of me wouldn't allow me to stay down that road and I, I made a transition. I, I completed the courses that I was in college for, for um, computer-aided drafting. And um, yeah, I just, music was it. When did you realize you were talented? And when did you know like, that you stood out from other people? I was in kindergarten <laughs> at this place called ET in Dearborn, Michigan. <laughs> And um, it was a daycare center, and they also had ki a kindergarten class there. And I got picked to perform Reach Out and Touch Somebody's Hand, Diana Ross from The Wiz. We were putting on a production of The Wiz, and I was chosen to sing that song. And I think that, that was one of the defining moments that told me that, hey, you probably can sing maybe a little bit better than everyone else around you. And, as I continued to grow up at like nine or 10, and I decided I didn't want to pursue music. And then the defining moment for deciding to be an artist mm -hmm. was by happenstance. One of my best girlfriends, her name is Angela Burchett. She got asked to do a show in, I think it was Columbus, Ohio. She calls me up and says, girl, I got asked to do the show. I don't want to do it. I can sing background for you. I mean, I know you write music or whatever, and I don't know if you've ever had a show, but do you want to do the show? I said, sure. The place was intimate, but I would say more than half of the people came up to me after the show and asked, where's your CD? 
you don't have CDs with you? When are you coming out with the CD? And that was the bug that said, oh, there's the money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there, ding, ding, ding. There's the money. And the, I'm also very passionate about business. So the business and the art meshed, it collided. It was like an explosion. The chaos came together and um, El Renee Music Incorporated was born. Oh, that's right. <laughs> how, how did you cultivate the talent? Because the skill level that you're singing at right now is probably better than that moment even. Absolutely. Imagine. It's always a, a work in progress. Um, I did spend a significant amount of time in my childhood singing in different jazz ensembles, which helps train your ear and helps you blend. And I had the opportunity to work under some really amazing vocal coaches, even though it was in a choral setting. You know, the work that she she did as an instructor, I mean, I'm talking about Nina Scott from Renaissance High School. The, the training that she did was so intensive that Renaissance High School Choir, in their own merit, outside of Detroit Public Schools, had a trip paid for them to go to Ghana. So, okay. yeah, just to give you the the history of and the the legacy that I'm I'm carrying, I am who I am vocally. But a lot of it, a lot of the expression and the the energy that I give has to do with life, life's experiences, um, being in front of larger audiences or being in front of that one-to-one -one person, which can sometimes be more intimidating than being in front of an audience of people where you can't see them really eye to eye. You could care less what they think, so. You're watching Meet the Artist. Coming up next, more with El Renee. And with Uverse, you can move your TV anywhere in the house. We're happy with Xfinity. Why would we move the TV? I don't know, but let me show you. Now, if you had the Uverse wireless receiver, you could take this anywhere. Oh. See? Anywhere you want. Don't get you by Uverse. Get the most entertainment on any device anywhere with Xfinity from Comcast. Don't say goodbye. Yes. Yeah, tell me about your single. Oh man, Don't Say Goodbye was introduced to me by Duran Golf. He is a Grammy nominated um, producer. He has worked with Neo and I actually met Mr. Golf through my MD, Eric Rainman Gaston. I was like, yo, I need some better music. Can you introduce me to somebody? And this is me speaking to Eric. And he was like, yeah, I'll introduce you to this person, this person. And then Duran's name was in the hat. I met him. He, the first time I met him, he let me hear this song and I wanted to stop everything else. Well, at the time, he wouldn't let me have it. He wouldn't let me have Don't Say Goodbye. He said he wanted to try and shop it. I'm still on an unknown artist, relatively unknown in the grand scheme of things. I accept that at this point. I, I asked this guy for Don't Say Goodbye for three years straight, and he finally gave it to me. Okay. And Don't Say Goodbye is a song about my, my second thing on my, my bucket list, being in love with someone that is just as in love with you. However, in the case of Don't Say Goodbye, you're in love with that person and they're not as in love with you. And they wanna walk away and you don't want them to. And I've been there plenty of times. So, the first person that ever broke my heart I sang that song to him in the studio. So we gotta make sure that we pump that up because just like I, I think it was Frank Sinatra who said the best revenge <laughs> is success. We gotta blow this song up. And that beautiful smile on your face. That's what I said, wait till the record drop. <laughs> Both know you 
the most influential person? Is there one most influential person in your music career and then the most influential person in your life? Ooh, I know. Mm. Well, musically, I would have to say, to date, the most influential person musically would have to be Kim. Vocally, I would have to say Stevie Wonder. I idolized him as a child. Today it's Kim, and the reason I say that is because Kim, first of all, was gracious enough to open his team up to have background vocalists. And although I did my due diligence in earning one of the spots, um, the opportunity to still be able to work with him I've worked with him since 2010, it's now 2014, and in those four years, he has decided that I see something in you, I believe in you, and I want to help you get to the next level. There isn't very much more influence than that. If you weren't doing music, what would you be doing? I wouldn't. Could you imagine? <laughs> I wouldn't be. <laughs> Wow. So nothing else? My, my, my reason for singing is because I want to make people feel like everything's going to be okay. okay. So that's what girl power is. So in essence, it's not, music is the, the medium, it's the vehicle. The message is in the music. And that message is be you, glow. <laughs> Does being from Detroit and being from, the, being from this place and play a role in who you are as an artist? Ah. I think being from, being from Detroit, it gives you a toughness. 
it gives you an edge where when, when other people are sleeping, we're up trying to fit, we're finding opportunities. We're honing in on our craft. Yeah, it makes you tough as nails. You can hear no a million times. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you don't stop until you win. And it's not done until you win. That's what being from Detroit does to you. <laughs> if you were going to give advice to a young girl, to an artist of any sort, you know, to say, hey, I want to pursue a career, I want to be a singer, what's the, what's the most important thing that they need to know? The most important thing that you would need to know if you're starting out in the music industry is, one, be very clear and certain about whether you're passionate about it or not. You have to love it. And then number two, don't ever give up until you win. Persevere, be diligent, and make sure you love it. So we love you. Oh, I love you too, Jessica. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for um, being on the show. We appreciate having you, and um, we'll do it again. We'll have you on some more. Cool. If Usain Bolt represents Xfinity Internet, what happens when we double the speed on two of our most popular plans? Meet his twice as fast brother, Insane Bolt. Now stream movies and shows twice as fast. Xfinity, the fastest just got faster. Vibrant colors and fabrics combined with his imagination rooted in his native Trinidadian culture. Ralph Taylor creates elaborate costumes and pop-up parades in an effort to pass along the history of his people and to simply make people happy. Okay, tell me, who is Ralph Taylor and what defines you? Ralph Taylor is Ralph Taylor. <laughs> was born in Trinidad and Tobago. I came to Detroit and um, continued doing my passion, which defines me. Tell me about growing up in Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, it was exciting. I just got the opportunity to travel the world. I uh, played soccer. I had the opportunity to go to the Virgin Islands and play soccer for the oil refinery. Did you play professionally? Yes, I did. Oh, how many years did you do? I played for five years and then I moved on. Yeah. When did you realize costume designing was something that you were interested in? It was something always in me. As a kid, nine years old, I had designed my first design in school and came first. What was it? It was an Indian outfit, Indian costume, and um, I continue doing it wherever I go, wherever I live. What was the motivating factor that you know propelled you to continue to follow this as your career path? Well, I always uh, look at uh, my culture as a very rich culture, colorful, happy. Yes. <laughs> so I spread it wherever I go, and. Um, it gives me that edge on a lot of other designers bringing something new to the environment. What's the distinct, what, what, what sets you apart from other designers? You know, what's the distinct part of what you do that's your style that's different than other people? Well, my style basically is different because it's, it's a composition of many things. It's a composition of colors, it's a composition of sculpturing, it's a composition of history behind the costuming. So that makes it a little different to the normal designs of costumes. And how did you, I mean, we're in your studio and it's um, like miraculous to average people. This is something that everybody can't do. So how did you develop the craft and skill to be able to actually do this work? Well, actually, as a kid, I grew up in a festive country, which is Trinidad. And we do have an annual celebration, uh, which we call Carnival. 
And um, as a kid, I always had love the colors and the shapes and looking at people making the costumes. So I decided that is something I would like to do. And you were how old when you, it was when you said first grade? Well, yeah, I was around, um, I would say nine years old. And, um, you know, I would follow the masqueraders the day of the parade. You know, sometimes I break loose from my parents <laughs> and just follow the groups and um, I just develop a love for parades and costuming. Where do you find the inspiration behind you know, your pieces? They're all different. Yes, they are. They are. Well, I love shapes to start with. And colors is a thing that blends in with my designs. So my inspiration is seeing people enjoying what I do keeps me doing the things I do and adding different colors and shapes and uh, using different cultures to blend in to what I do like the Indians, the uh, Africans, you know there's a lot of history in, in, in the costuming. Are there other costume designers that have influenced you in some kind of way? Yeah, in, 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 in the early age of uh, my life, uh, there is a traditional thing to go into what we call a mass camp, where they're making the costumes for the parades, and observe uh, what the older guys were doing, uh, the wire sculpturing before the fabric and all the beautification. That used to turn me on a lot, just the way they form, the shapes, yeah. What do you love most about your art and what you do? What I love most of my art is it brings a lot of smiles and happiness to people's faces. Everybody, are you ready? Yeah! Are you ready? Yeah! Let's march! watching Meet the Artist. Coming up next, more with Ralph Taylor. Hey, uh, can you help me move? Oh, you know what? I'm stuck at the office. Hi, I'm moving. No problem, sir. You can get your Xfinity services installed on the date you choose or have a self-install kit sent to your new home. Thank you. Finally get some help moving. Call 1-855-MOVE-EDGE today. Your, your costumes, when, when people wear your costumes, it brings it, you know, it really brings the, the puppets, and I've seen the costumes before. I've worn your costumes, so I know what it does to people in the audience when they see it, and to children and grown-ups. So, you know, what, you know, how does that affect you when you see people reacting to your work? Well, it affects me. It gives me a good effect <laughs> where, you know, I'm, I'm bringing joy or happiness to, to other people by my work. But that's the effect that uh, smiles and, you know, chain my designs on. And you said there's a mix of, tell me, like, I mean, are you pulling from South American culture? Are you pulling from the Caribbean, Africa? Like, what's the biggest, what country I guess is influence you? You know, I'm assuming it's your hometown. Well, Trinidad, I came from Trinidad. And um, we have the Arcs, Indians, and um, in school we study you know, worldwide history, not just the history of Trinidad. We try to infuse all these cultures into our culture in a colorful kind of our presentation. 
I mean, I'm wondering what keeps you, what keeps you connected to Michigan and what keeps you here in, D, in the city of Detroit? Well, I came into Detroit, um, you know, I had met my ex years ago in, in the Bahamas while I was doing a show. And I had the opportunity to come here on a job assignment also uh, to build a federal building. I was also a welder. So I came here on that assignment and I decided to stay and um, share my culture with the communities. Do you interact with the other artists that are here? Oh yes, I do. I, Detroit is exciting about art. Detroit is really a haven for art. And um, you know, my art stands out. Uh, I have a different uh, format that I work with. I have a different culture that I work with. So it, it, it brings a nice flavor. You've done a lot already. What are your future aspirations? Like what, you, you still have dreams about something that you haven't created yet? Oh yeah, I, I keep dreaming and thinking about designs every day. We just finished the, the Electricity Light Festival and uh, that's a new phase. I'm going into electronics into my costuming. And um, the sky's the limit. Electronics in your costume is amazing. Mm -hmm. So if you weren't doing this, you weren't costume designing, if you weren't surrounded by all of this every day, what would you be doing? I guess probably I'd be teaching my skills because I like to share, I like to share uh, my talents that was given to me. And um, I would embrace a group of kids, a group of adults and teach them the, the skills that I have. Do you believe there's a connection to energy and spirits when it comes to art, when you're making puppets and people are getting inside of something that's creative, but it also has its own life force in itself? Do you, I don't have, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, you know, I, I am the type of person that I have my own beliefs, and my beliefs is the bottom line is to make people happy. And uh, I do use a lot of characters. Um, you know, from my experience of folklore and so as a kid growing up. And I try to infuse that into my designs. Uh, but uh, the bottom line is to make that individual happy, that individual needs to turn into the character that matches uh, the design. Do you have a favorite piece? Well, or two, <laughs> or five, do you have one? All my pieces are favorite to me, it, it's, it's special to me. If you can give some advice to an artist that wants, sees your work and says, well, I want to I wanna do that, you know, what would you tell them? Well, number one, um, with, with any craft or anything, you have to have a passion for it. Uh, you can love something, loving something is different to having a passion. You can love something for a week or so, Having a passion for something, it lives on. So I would advise them or recommend to them, have a passion for what you really want to do and just do it. It lasts a long time. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Jessica Caremore, and we'll see you next time on Meet the Artist.